Hey, everybody. I just want to uh, look at those simulations with you really quick, the two that I had you look at. Um, so we were looking at uh, John Travoltage and the balloons and static electricity. Let's actually start with the balloons and static electricity one here. Um, the, these apps are pretty cool, kind of kind of fun to mess around with. Um, they're they're really pretty uh, complex behind the scenes, believe it or not. Um, they have real physics equations programmed into them. That's kind of the whole point of it. Uh, students at University of Colorado Boulder make these, grad students typically. Um, these are running a little slow today. Not sure what's going on there. But all right, we have this sweater, right? Take the balloon. Each one of these represents an electron and a proton. You'll notice that protons don't really move very far. They don't really do anything. Um, the electrons are what move. And I talk about this a little bit in my previous video. So our study of static electricity will be very conceptual for a little while. You know, we don't do too many calculations with it. There's really two equations that we end up having to use here um, to describe what's going on. Um, so anyway, uh, let's go. We can do have different options here. I'll show you that in a second. So I rub the balloon on the sweater. I pick up the electrons. Notice I don't pick up any um, protons. Now, positive and negatives attract, right? So when one of the objects accumulates a charge, and that charge, it'll attract to the other object. So I took the electrons off the sweater right, with the balloon. So now the balloon has a net negative charge. If I add up all the electrons and all the protons, it's going to add up to a big negative number, right? The sweater, add it all up, and I, I have a lot of uh, positive charges. Now, this one's kind of different. Let's reset the balloon. Let's do just charge differences. Right now, everything's neutral. But if I take the balloon and rub it on the sweater, it picks up electrons. And when it picks up electrons, right, that reveals protons. This is, I think, kind of the better way to think about it, um, right? So when you pick up those electrons, it reveals protons. So anything gets charged positively by having electrons removed from it. Anything gets charged negatively by adding electrons to it. Um, so anyway... Keep that in mind, right? So adding electrons to this, leaving behind protons. Now, what's kind of interesting is one thing I don't like about this is you have not removed all the electrons from a sweater, right? Um, it turns out you really only are removing um, valence electrons uh, or or some very some surface electrons, and typically they're only coming from the surface. Typically not removing electrons that are caught up in bonding, right? That doesn't happen. So you're not literally stripping all the electrons from this. If you did, it would just simply fall apart and not be a ma solid material anymore. It would be all positive charge and it would explode apart from each other. Um, so anyhow, once you get the balloon charge, you can bring it over towards the wall and you'll notice something subtle happen, right? The positive charge doesn't move can't move. They're locked in the nuclei, right? Protons are stuck in the nuclei of the materials, right? However, when you bring the balloon near it, you see the positive charges repel away. Positive or the negative charges repel away. The electrons move. Electrons can move. They're mobile, right? So I bring this big negative balloon towards the wall and the electrons in the wall get repelled away, right? And the balloon if you get it really close to it and you get it Far enough away from the sweater, the balloon will actually attract towards the wall, right? And this is something called uh, polarization that is occurring here. You know, polarization, polarization. Maybe you've heard that word before. Polarization is when you end up giving something a uh, a pole, poles, positive side and negative side. This is polarized. All right. So by moving the electrons away with the balloon, you now have exposed, you've now exposed positive charge protons here, which then pull on the negative charges. I wish there was 
you can see the forces of attraction here. There's another app I can show you that the force of the of attraction on um, that we're going to take a look at later on. Um, so anyway, here you go. Um, this is just you know it's kind of good fun. You know, there's not much to it. That's what you do. You you notice know, notice if I if I bring the balloon, it, it's not really getting attracted to that. It looks like it's sticking, but it's not getting attracted. Two neutral objects do not attract each other. However, make note of that, right? A neutral object, the wall is neutral. It's neutral. Stays neutral the whole time. A neutral object will attract something that's charged because it gets polarized. And now you might say, well, why, why does it actually pull? I wish I could draw on this right now for you. Maybe I can. Let's see. Why does it actually pull? I think I can, actually. All right. So it pulls because there's a force of attraction. Ah, pen. I want to do that. Pen, 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 pen. It's not letting me. It's not actually letting me do the pen. Hmm. Highlight clicks. High cursor will not move. No focus mouse. Mouse pointer. Pause recording. No, it's not letting me do anything here. Alt P, will that do it? Alt P, hey, there we go. We got the pen. All right, so there's a, oh, no, not gonna work. Great. <laughs> oh, it's just like, why isn't that letting me draw anything? That's nonsense. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, let me erase all that. Oh, that was a bad idea to try to do that. Alt M. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. All right, back to the mouse. Ignore these points. You could have a force of attraction between the positive and negative charge. And here's the trick. The closer the two objects are to each other, the greater the magnitude of the force of attraction. So uh, because that, let me say that again, the closer the two objects are together, the two charged particles are together, the greater the force of attraction between them. So when you polarize the wall, you are making the positive charge closer than the negative charge. You see, there's a competing thing happening here. All these charges here, they're actually being repelled by the electrons and attracted to the protons. But because the electrons repel each other and get pushed away from the surface, you've left the surface positive. And the surface being more positive makes it closer to the electrons and it attracts them. I'm going to show this many times in different ways. It's a really important thing. That's how anything you charge up and stick to the wall, how it sticks. Um, pretty much anything that sticks, that's how it sticks. Even tape, believe it or not. Tape is sticky because it uh, attracts to uh, any, it, it's really kind of a, a messed up thing to think about, right? Anything that's sticky is sticky because of the electro static attractions, right? Um, it's a fundamental force of nature, the electrostatic force. It's really pretty wild. All right, so that's the balloon static one. Basically, you're supposed to see, you know, you, you, you notice how much more it attracts to the, like I released the balloon in, right in between, it goes to the sweater every time because the sweater is charged positively, right? There's no negative charges over here for, uh, the positive charges to compete with. These positive charges over here, they're competing with these negative charges still. The sweater has no competition. It's gonna wildly attract that balloon. All right, let's go back and look at John Travoltage now. Um, John Travoltage is more uh, about demonstrating current flow. What's up, who's that? My kids is coming down in here. Um, John Travoltage is more about demonstrating current flow. Let me find him here. There he is. Um, all right, John Travoltage. It's a good one. It's just kind of funny, right? This one's always fun. This is something you've all experienced where you walk across the carpet and you then you touch a doorknob and you get shocked. Well, what's happening here? Gazach. I don't know if you can hear that on your end or not. Probably not. Um, What's happening here is the charge builds up. Let me move his hand back a little bit, right? These electrons accumulate in his body. They repel each other, so they kind of spread out. If 
I get enough on there, they, they all kind of will spread out through his body. Notice that it doesn't go over from his foot to his doorknob. That's kind of a weird thing. It would. Um, but anyway, the electrons are repelling each other. They're going to distribute throughout his body, his surface of his body. Um, why do you pick up those electrons? Well, it's all about the interaction between the your shoes or socks and the carpet. You are must be what must be happening is you're taking electrons from the carpet. And they're going to put on your body. So those electrons are all trying to repel each other, right? They're they're trying to get away from each other. They want to go somewhere. And metal is a conductor, and we'll talk about that more later on. Um, metal's a conductor, and you can give a path for the electrons to go, right? And you see that little lightning bolt, and it drains them. That's called grounding. It's called grounding, people. If you get charged up, and then you touch something metal, and then you get rid of that excess charge, it's called grounding, all right? It can actually happen the reverse way, too. There might be a material you walk on that causes you to be charged positively, and if you touch a doorknob, so meaning the material you're walking on will take electrons out of you, um, and if you end up positively charged and touch a doorknob, then what happens is you draw electrons from the doorknob into you to neutralize the excess positive charge. Pretty cool. Just a couple little introductions. Um, the other really good one is, uh, let's see, charges and fields. Let's see if we can find it here. You know, I don't want to spend too much time. I don't know if it's an HTML5 one or not. Da, 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 gravity force, gravity orbits. Ba, 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 ba. Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law. Well, this one's not the one I was thinking of. Charges and fields. Here it is. There's another one, electric field hockey. That's good fun. I'm not sure if there's an HTML5 version of that one yet either. Um, Coulomb's law. One we will do. We will play with these ones because these ones are more quantitative, right? We put a positive charge in space. These arrows represent the electric field. Put a negative charge in space. Arrows represent a ne negative field. Um, I can put a sensor in here and it shows me the net force slash net electric field on the object, right? So we haven't talked about electric field yet, but if I, this little sensor is showing a positive, if I put a positively charged, if I put a proton in, in this field, which direction would it move? And this is basically, you know, spandex world again. If we were at school, I would demonstrate this with the spandex. Um, Anyhow, that one's a little complex. The other one, but it's it's cool. It's good fun. Uh, the other one was, this is a new one. I haven't messed with Coulomb's Law. So this is a lot like the gravitational force one that we messed with, but it's a little bit different, right? It's the same idea, but rather than mass, you're manipulating the, char the amount of charge. And you see it's one of them's positive, negative. That's the difference here. You can make one of them negative, they will repel, right? So that's the difference with gravity. Electrostatic force can be repulsive. Um, so we'll play with those apps too, try to get some information, try to glean some knowledge out of those. Um, lots of cool stuff in here, right? This one's a fun one too, believe it or not, has, has applications here, building in an atom. All right, give me a proton, boom. Me a neutron is it going to be still hydrogen it doesn't tell me which one it is that's kind of cool kind of helium one two neutral atom nice this is fun i'll have the kids play with this anyway have a good one everybody take a look at these videos